by and large yes i have gone through but uh, since i am very late for which i would uh, apologize uh, i would try to be very quick and focus to some of the uh, some of the issues that you have flagged there uh i would make some initial remarks about to give you an idea as to when i joined the profession and that to litigation way back in 1982 the challenges were enormous challenges of lack of accessibility of reading material almost full dependence on braille and non availability of law book journals in braille and probably not practical to have regular journals in braille and voluminous law book in braille in that background i joined the profession in i am talking of india maybe in certain developed countries situation may be little better at that time now therefore as a blind lawyer choosing to but to the profession as a litigating lawyer not as a corporate lawyer or as 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 an uh, employment opportunity in some big law firms which was also very challenging at that time if you wanted to take that path so i decided to become a litigating lawyer i chose this litigation as an option for my profession why i did so as i said other options were more difficult for me to survive and therefore i thought that when if i choose this path of being in litigation as a lawyer i think it is my skill and wisdom my capability which will make or unmake me in the profession now the first challenge was how to win confidence of the clients and get the client edge because unless you get the client to have confidence in you and he gives your his her his her case to you for uh for protecting his her interest it is very difficult to show your capability and create confidence in your ability i was fortunate in this sense that i had if i may say so a godfather at that time he was a senior ias in delhi government mr bachpay who before i enrolled myself as a lawyer in 1982 gave me a letter and penelling me on the cases for uh to uh, for being contested on behalf of gonsabas the as uh, some of you who are conversant with indian laws land laws uh govern the law gonsaba lands which are in a way public land owned by gonsabas the last scale and crotch and the first case which was given to me was for defending the interests of poorest of poor 
over allotted land in a particular village by Gaon Sabha. But they were out of position, they were never given position, and those lands were encroached. The matter was before High Court. I used this opportunity in order to establish my identity from the first case itself as a person who could deliver. I prepared for four days and then I appeared before Justice Ward, as some of you might be knowing from India. Justice Ward was a very judicious but very difficult and technical judge. Be that as it may, my preparations helped me. I had extensive bail notes because let me tell you that even now I extensively use bail notes. The only methodology has changed. Now I take bail notes wherever it is permissible to use computers. I take bail notes on pen drive. Otherwise, I take my bail notes in uh, a hard copy in the, uh, of bail notes for my reference. And it, this has been, in fact, a scoring point for me, use of bail. Every time when, the, when I am before a new judge, even now, I am saying, that they mostly see how best can I read my braille notes and refer to the to the relevant pages by reading it in braille. To a great extent, this has helped me. But as I said, the challenge to have update knowledge of developing case laws on given subjects was an issue which I had no other alternative but to depend more on the leader's help and help which was available from my cited colleagues and my family members. I must frankly admit that in the initial years, unless the technology, I, I could become a little bit technology savvy and could use technology for ensuring accessibility, better accessibility during arguments, during preparation of pleadings, during preparation of uh, evidence on behalf of the clients. So, on the issue of winning confidence of the client, I would say that you will have to capitalize on the first opportunity that you get. And therefore, be selective for the first case. Be selective if you are 100% sure that you could do justice to that case and get relief. Then only take that case as a first case when you enter the profession. It is very essential for us lawyers with disabilities and particularly visually impaired lawyers to be selective in the first instance. I know what I am trying to convey. This is also a very difficult task to do. But that is the, uh, I would say, that has, that selection of that case helped me to establish myself. As an expert on land loss, I, I can tell you that initially I was even uh, treated to be the most knowledgeable on land loss. And there are very few advocates who are well conversant with land laws. And very few choose, choose that option. 
or that line of law. Now, flowing from this experience of this case, I would also like to share with you that it is easy to create confidence in you among illiterate or semi-literate persons rather than on very literate and educated persons. Coupled with it, it is very difficult to create confidence in the abilities of disabled lawyers in the corporate world. When they have so many options, they would hardly choose a disabled lawyer. That is my experience so far. But if you create the confidence in illiterate or semi-literate people, they send the message across and that creates your client base that I must share with you out of my experience. At least I developed my client base from there. And then like a pyramid, it went to other segments also. And finally, to the corporate also I could reach. So that is the part on the issue of how do you win confidence among the client. Now I will very quickly go to the very important aspect which you flagged in about the trial, conduct of trial by a, particularly a, by a lawyer with visual impairment. There are issues which have been raised by the courts also. And I would like to quote one. I often quote it in such deliberations. And this is a real uh, example that I am giving. There was a probate case in respect of a will executed by a blind gentleman. Beneficiary was also blind. And the witnesses to the will, attesting witnesses were all also blind and lawyer was also blind. That is me. When I was adducing evidence of the one of the attesting witness, the judge stopped me. He squarely asked me how this blind person can adduce evidence without seeing his signature. How can he confirm? That it is that variable which he attested as a witness, as one of the witnesses. My answer was that he will do it after having the document read over to him and based on that he will confirm or refuse to confirm the execution of it. The judge did not agree and we had a very heated argument. It went on to the extent of saying that all of you, including lawyer, are blind. So why should I not discard the evidence? And he, in fact, passed an order. 
which I challenged. And that was reversed. So that is one aspect of the evidence about the competence of the evidence of blind person with regard to a document. Now, after Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 coming into force, this issue cannot be raised again because legal competence of being a witness and adducing testimony by persons with disabilities has been recognized as a right. So no court now can raise any question on that count. The second aspect, again leading uh, regarding the chart, is very important, which you have also flagged. How do you understand and develop your argument or prepare your witness in those cases where visual uh, visual uh, displays are there or documents of visual nature are to be proved. For example, in a property dispute, there is a site plan supposing which your client wants to rely upon or dispute. Now, in order to prepare his evidence in respect of that map or site plan, First, you must understand as a lawyer, actually, what your client, uh, what is your client's case and how do you visualize? Then only you can develop your questions. Now, how do I do? Because I have done many cases, as I said, in land laws where maps, etc., akshazra, etc., were to be proved or Questions around that have to be put to the witness of other side. What I did in that case, now I am no longer the after having been designated uh, senior, I am no longer conducting trials. But so long as I was conducting trials also, what I have been doing in such situations. I have been trying to create, with the help of my colleagues, a sketch in my mind and to, to understand the actual uh, dimensions, actual position of a particular area which is the subject matter of the case and then try to visualize as to what is the best in, in what is in the best interest of your of my client on the basis of the pleadings that he has set up and on that basis after having made a kind of sketch in my mind in my memory i would say this visual display or map having been converted into my memory uh, understanding a kind of visualization in my memory and in my wisdom is the only alternative to do all this and i have never failed in that by adopting this this much i can tell you we can go on and on on this aspect, but so I it to say that there are alternatives. The only issue is you have to be innovative. The, the only issue is that you must have a full understanding of the case that you are defending or you are fighting from the viewpoint of your client and also. While preparing such cases, for that matter, any case, you must also always start, which I do, 
whether on trial side or affiliate side or rate side i always start from the weakest point of the case and let's go the answers there and then when i don't find answer to any weakest point i strategize how to escape the query being raised around that and what could be the method to try to bury it by raising a better strong point in your foot so question of comparative uh, kind of comparative uh, merit of the organs on those issues could be a strategy to bury them up where you are doing that i have successfully resorted now lastly when it comes to the what is the best for a person with visual impairment particularly while litigating while acting as a litigating lawyer i take up e and read jurisdictions are better than original right because of the fact that issues of evidence and all those problems may arise and any problem in your understanding of say for instance map or about the authenticity of a document whether the signatures are forged or not on that if you have not completely understood the nitty gritty of that visual part then probably you may end up in uh, conducting the trial in a manner which may be injurious to the interest of your client so therefore save ways appeal and wait but at the same time nobody would give you a brief of appeal or writ in the first instance unless you have established you cannot go to that level and therefore you have to start the trial i would have once again apologize for being late and i'm open to any questions that you may wish to raise